the Q pop-up edit component is one of those components where when I first discovered it, I thought, whoa, I never thought of this. This is such a great idea. It gives such a nice UI experience and it keeps your application fast because it means that basically this code isn't being rendered on the screen unless you actually need it to be rendered on the screen. So rather than having inputs fields all over a table, for example, you can just have pop-up edits and they're only going to render those input fields when the user's actually ready to input something for that data cell. So this is a really cool component and I'm excited to share it with you. Let's begin. So first of all, we're going to need some data to model. So let's yank out of here ref and then we'll do the use rule setup and we'll say const, let's call this label is equal to and we'll say change me for the label. Then I can say return here, label to basically expose that on the template, save it, and we're ready to go. Oh, that needs to be a ref. Cool. Now I can come up here and spit out that label. Label, and we probably wanna wrap this in a div as well, just to keep everything a little bit more contained for this video. All right, so save it, and there we go. We've got the label, doesn't do much yet. So now what we can actually do is attach a pop-up edit to that label by saying q-popup-edit. And now that we've got our pop-up edit, we wanna add a few other things. We wanna say v-slot and set that equal to scope. And this part is really important. I'll tell you why in a second. We then wanna say v-model. Notice that I'm modeling on the pop-up edit, not on the input that we're going to put in there. We model the pop-up edit itself. This is something that probably confuses a lot of people, but I'll explain it properly in a moment. And then we wanna say auto-save. So basically that means if I close out of this pop-up edit, it's automatically going to save it for me. I don't need to click on a button or something like that in order to make it save. Next, we're going to say Q-input. All right, so when we open this pop-up edit, it's basically a mini menu with this input sitting inside of it. And then we'll say V-model is equal to scope.value. Now this is the part that used to confuse me to begin with. The reason that we basically pull the scope out of the pop-up edit and then model that. The reason we do that is because it means that the pop-up edit can take a little bit more control. So if we wanna have stuff like the initial value for that pop-up edit, or if we wanna say don't commit these changes until the user presses okay, in order to do that, basically we need to take the scope out of the pop-up edit and model it here. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, it's probably something that you kind of just need to sit and stare at the computer for a while to try and understand. This took me a little while to understand as well. But once again, the reason that we're saying pull the scope out of this pop-up edit and then model it on the input is so that the pop-up edit has a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more control over when we commit the value. All right, so that might make a little bit more sense as we continue with this example. Next, let's make this dense so that it takes up less room. We're gonna auto focus it. Just gives a nicer user experience. So the moment they open this pop-up edit, it focuses on this input straight away. And then we'll say at key up dot enter. So when the user presses the enter key, I want you to say scope dot set. All right, so once again, since the actual modeling of the label is happening there, we can say don't update this value until I call scope.set here. All right, so let's save that. And now when I click on here, we can say to something, enter, and then it updates. Now, just to sort of drive this home, I'm going to create a div under here that's going to spit out our current label value. Style is equal to margin left, and how about 120 pixels? There we go. So basically I'm just spitting this value out again over here on the right. The reason I'm doing that is check this out. If I change this value, it's not changing the value here. All right, once again, this label is being modeled on the pop-up edit. So as we change, we can change this value as much as we like. We're not gonna get re-renders for all of our components that are referencing that value. None of that happens until we press enter, then the value is updated. And you'll see a few more of these benefits later on in the video. All right, we can probably get rid of this for now and move on. Another thing you might wanna do is come to this wrapper div and say class is equal to cursor-pointer. All right, before I save this, notice that when I hover this text, 
that we get that kind of weird sort of cursor pointer and it's not very obvious that we can edit this. Whereas if I save that and set the cursor to pointer, now when we hover it, our cursor becomes a pointer. This is a really useful class, especially for things like links where you need to programmatically turn something into a link. I love this class, you use it all the time. Now, the most common reason we're going to actually use a pop-up edit is inside of a table. So let's get rid of all of this and do an example with a table. I'll come down here and get rid of that. Let's say const rows is equal to a reference to an array. And then we'll have an object here and we'll have an ID equal to one for this and then a text equal to my text one. That'll do for this example. Copy that, paste, paste. So we've got two examples, set that to two and then set that to three. Save it, and then we also want to expose this to the template. Next, I'll come up here and say q-table, and then we'll say the rows for that table is equal to the rows that we just set here. And there we go. Table's really cool because all you actually need is those rows in order to get a nice working table. You don't even have to add the columns property, which I really like. So let's see if we can now model this text value using a pop-up edit. And first, I basically want to jump into the template of this row and kind of recreate what we've got here in such a way that we can then start playing around with it. I'll show you what I mean by that. So we come down here, we can say template, and then we'll go body and yank out the scope. I'm about to do a lot of Q table related stuff, so you might want to check out that video if you want to understand what I'm doing here. Q dash table row. We're basically recreating the table row now. We'll say props is equal to props there. And what I might do instead of saying scope, let's just call that props because that's kind of what it actually is. Q dash table data. And then once again, we're going to proxy those props into the table data. All right, we're just recreating the table here. I'll paste that down. The first one, we need to have a key equal to ID. And then the second one, we'll have a key equal to text. Save it, and there we go. So basically what we've done here is we've recreated the table row and the table data for each of the rows here. So this body slot basically allows us to tap into every single row that is created. All right, so let's move on. Now we'll jump into here and say props.row. So let's grab the current row and then pull the ID out of it. And we'll do the exact same thing here as well props.row, but give me the text this time. Save it, and there we go. We've basically recreated those rows, but now we have total control over it. So if we wanted to say, for example, background-green here, we can start doing stuff like that. All right, moving on. Now we wanna make it so that when you click on the text here, we get a pop-up edit, and we can change that text. And this is surprisingly easy to do. We just say q-popup edit, and then the same stuff as before, v dash slot is equal to the scope. So we're going to yank the scope out of the pop up edit. v dash model is equal to props.row.text. So basically, we're grabbing the current row and we're modeling the text value on that. So let's save it. And then once again, I'll come down here and say auto dash save. Now inside of there, we're going to need a q dash input, q dash input. And just like we did before, we'll say v-model is equal to scope.value. All right, so same as before. Another thing we want to do here is say dance, autofocus, all that good stuff that just gives the user a better experience. And then, of course, something like keyup.enter. So they can just press the enter key to then say scope.set which is our way of saying, okay, I want you to set the value now. By the way, I should have mentioned before, this is a function. So when we say key enter, call the function scope.set. And then basically that's going to say, hey, pop up edit, I want you to now save the value that you're currently modeling on this input. All right, let's see if this works. Let's change that to text, something else, enter, and it works. How cool is that? Bit of a typo, but who cares? You can see though how powerful this could be. Now you can make it so that you can edit all of these fields and rather than just putting an input in there directly, it's going to be a lot faster because none of this is rendered until we actually click on that field. 
Super, super handy. I love the pop-up edit. All right, so this is probably a good opportunity to just show you a couple of other things we can do. We could say, for example, class is equal to background-accent, whatever that color is, and then text-white. So of course you can then start styling this. That looks atrocious, so let's come down to the input and say it's dark now that we've set it to a darker background. And then we can say the color is equal to white because purple against um, purple against our primary color will look silly. And there we go, my other value. All of that still works. What else can we do? We can also add set and cancel buttons, which is really simple. You just say buttons here. And now when we open the pop-up edit, we got a cancel button and we got a set button. Let's get rid of this styling. It's just terrible, isn't it? <laughs> get rid of dark there as well. Bring us back to what we had before. Nice. Another thing we can do is change the labels on those. So label dash cancel, and let's set that to whoops. And then we could say label dot set. And then let's change that to save. Open that up. Now we've got whoops to cancel it and then save, save me. And that's going to work just a bit more of a nicer UI experience. Another thing we can actually do is force the user to click on one of those buttons by saying persistent. And now if I click here and then try and click out of it, it ain't going to work. Nothing's going to work. Oh, enter's going to work though, because we actually set that on here. However, you can press enter or make sure that you actually press one of these buttons here. So that's kind of cool, having that extra flexibility, forcing the user to press something. But if you really want control, then that's where we can start using some of the scoped slots. And I'm just gonna run through all of those one at a time. So let's come down here and I'll quickly write them out. We've got set, this one I've already showed you here. Another one we have is cancel. We've also got initial value. So tell me what the initial value was when I opened this pop-up dialog. We've also got value, which we've already used. That's the thing that we're modeling. And then we've got validate. So I'll show you that one last. It's really cool. Now we can say Q dash button here. And I might get rid of the buttons. I'll get rid of all of this. And I might even get rid of auto save. Let's make this really simple. And now we can say, when this button is clicked, I want you to cancel. We'll say scope.cancel. And now let's say label is equal to cancel. So this is just a way of recreating that cancel button however you like to do it. And now we can click on cancel there and that's going to work. Once again, we've also got that initial value. So let's just spit that out here. Initial value. Oh, once again, we have to say scope.initial value. Click on here. And now we can see what that original value was. But as I change it, changed, that value doesn't change. So that could be helpful, for example, to compare what you currently have uh, with the initial value. And then if they're the same, you might choose not to commit the changes. So if you want that extra flexibility, you've got it. And there we go. Now, when I click on there again, changed is now the initial value. So that's good to know. Of course, we've got value. So this one will be updated as we type stuff in. And then the last one is validate. So check this out. It's really, really cool. If I close all of that out, and then I come up here, we can add a validator to our pop-up edit by saying validate. And then we'll say, all right, give me the current value that you're validating against. And I want you to check that the length of that value is greater than three. So basically we're saying here, I want the text to be greater than three characters. But now we basically need to take that validation and use it on our input. And I'll show you how we can do that quite easily. Rules is equal to an array. And there we go. And then I can come in here and say, give me the current value. And then check that the scope dot validate. All right, so we're taking the current validator that we set here on the pop-up edit. And I want you to compare that against the scope's value. So check that the current value is greater than three. Now what we do here in order to do rules using Quasar is we add or, and that basically means if this evaluates to true, we're not going to have any errors and it's going to be correct. Otherwise, I want you to return this string. So if we get a string back here, it will show an error. Must be more than three characters. So that sounds a little bit mean. How about we say more than three characters, please. 
smiley face. Sometimes as developers, we tend to write things a little bit too precise and it comes across rude, I think, to the users. <laughs> anyway, let's refresh the page and see if this is going to work now. If I put one character in, we get that validation error. And then if I fill it in, we can press enter now and it's going to work. And the last thing I just want to point out is you, can, you could have your own buttons, for example, that do API requests. And then when you get the result back, you close it. But then maybe you want to do a validation before that. For all of that kind of thing, it's all possible using the scope here. And if you want to validate it, once again, you can just say validate and then scope.value. And let me just show you that we can actually use that here. We'll say scope wherever we like. So if we click on there, put in some text, we can see it updating at the top there. So you have total control over this validator. You can say, for example, disable this button if it's not valid or enable this button when it is valid or only allow the user to press OK and send an API request to the back end when this has been validated. There's all sorts of cool things that you could do to basically make this a really advanced pop-up edit. So you could say, for example, uh, just to sort of drive this home, have a button here that's got a spinner. And when you click on it, the spinner starts, makes an API request. And then uh, when we get that API request back and it's successful, then it's going to stop the loading on the spinner and commit the changes using scope.set. So as you can see, Pop-up edit has been really beautifully thought out so that it's quite simple to get up and running with. But when you need that extra flexibility, you've got scope. Always remember that if you want that extra flexibility, start looking into Quasar's scope, start looking into its templates, because this framework really is quite limitless when you take full advantage of the templates. All right, so hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I really enjoy using the pop-up edit. And once again, if you don't understand what's happening here with this V-slot scope, do take the time to understand it because it does make everything sort of click into place for all of these examples. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.